Well, y'all, I just got back from vacation. And for vacation, all that I did was I went and I spent a week with my parents. And it was awesome. I got to sleep and I got to pray and I got to visit. And I got to sleep. It was nice. I'm sleeping, I got to pray, and I got to visit. And um, I slept a lot. I, uh, my dad, some of you know my dad had back surgery the day before Thanksgiving. And so it was a real blessing that I was able to be there and that mom and I were just like able to be with him as he recovered. And that was beautiful. And I had some other great opportunities. I got to go celebrate Mass for the kids at the elementary school and the middle school where I, where I went. Uh, when I was little, and I got to hang out with the men's group in Church Point, which like just started to exist a couple months ago, and there are people who I know and love in the men's group, which was like really exciting, and it was great. And I got to pray. Last week, I shared with the people at 9 o'clock Mass, because I had 9 o'clock Mass, and I left, and Father Mark had 11 o'clock Mass, and last week, I shared with the people at 9 o'clock Mass that lately, week before last, just kind of lately, I had been kind of, kind of, uh, had a uh, week. And I wasn't really like fervent. I wasn't really like getting after it in, it's in my life. I was saying my prayers like I was supposed to. I was going to the chapel. I was, you know, doing what I had to do, doing my duties. But, but I wasn't doing it with like, with, with vigor. And so I said, hey, Christ has got to be the king of our lives. Last week was Christ the king. Christ has got to be the king of your life. Christ has got to be the king in my life. And so what am I going to do to get myself off the throne? Because I'm kind of putting myself on the throne. I don't need to be on the throne. And to let Jesus have his rightful place on the throne in my life. And so I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going on vacation, so I'm going to double my prayer. I'm going to make two holy hours a day instead of one. And I could do that because I was on vacation. So, Monday came around, and I had some good accountability. I had some, some brothers of mine who I knew that I could count on to keep me account to fuss at me if I didn't do it, in other words, but with permission. So, Monday I did it, and Tuesday I did the two holy hours. Wednesday I did the two holy hours. Thursday I did the two holy hours. And then came Friday. Friday I, I drove home. I drove back here. And here are all my excuses. It was a long drive. And then I had an unexpected visit with, with somebody else. And, uh, well, that was great, but it, it took longer than I expected. And then I got home, and I went to my office, which is usually a very bad thing to do on vacation. But I actually wasn't tempted to go to work. I, was, I went to my office, and I found a pile of boxes with stuff. I was not surprised by these boxes of stuff, because I had ordered all of the stuff on Cyber Monday. So now, I have all but one Christmas present done, and I got some new clothes, because it's way cheaper at this time of year. I know that was bad, but what did I begin to do? I began to open the boxes and check everything out, and I began to unload my car, because I had a week's worth of of clothes and just stuff from being on vacation. And um, the time just kind of drug on and drug on and drug on. And, and I was doing stuff that was useful and, and helpful. And I didn't pray that second holy hour. Beware, says Jesus that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and from the anxieties of daily life. Last Friday, I did not engage in any carousing or in any drunkenness. I just let my heart become drowsy with the stuff of daily life. I let the good, Christmas presents, new clothes, unpacking, visiting with a friend, be more important, or rather distract me from the best, from being with Jesus. I let the good distract me from the best. 
Jesus says, beware of carousing and drunkenness. Beware of mortal sin. And he also says, beware of the good things that take our eyes off of the best thing. These candles represent you and me. You, you and I who, like John the Baptist, are supposed to give ourselves and let the light of Christ shine in us. And our hearts can become drowsy, and God forbid we can fall into a mortal sin. <laughs> and the light goes out. And what do we do if, God forbid, we fall into a mortal sin? Well, we run to Jesus who we find in the confessional. And we run to Jesus in the confessional. And we ask him, forgive me, for I know not what I do. Forgive me. Let my light shine again. So if God forbid you're struggling with mortal sin, please come to confession. Come catch me after Mass. Come by. Come on Saturday. If you're struggling with mortal sin, please, please come to confession. Say, Father, here are my sins, and also can you help me like, make a plan to fight against the mortal sin? But maybe for most of us, maybe for more of us than not, it's not the mortal sin that's the common struggle. It's not our candle being blown out, but it's being suffocated. Watch what happens to the light. It's not immediate. It's less and less and less. It can even come close to coming back. And less and less and less. What are those things those good things, especially at this time of year when we're so busy, what are those good things? Are those venial sins maybe? Either way, that begin to suffocate our light. Maybe for you, it's, it is. Christmas shopping or parties or decorating or all these really good things that we should do and that we should enjoy. Maybe this season of life for you is kind of like my Friday was. And if it is, it's okay. We just have to know the dangers and fight against them. So let me tell you the rest of the story of my day on Friday. I hadn't prayed like I was supposed to. I was in the middle of unpacking the boxes and unpacking my car and doing all these things. And, but my best friend knew that I was home. And so I got a text message that said, hey, you want to pray a little bit on the phone tonight? So okay. So it's like 7, 6.30, something like that. And so I'm on the phone for like 15, 20 minutes and pray a little bit and then as we hung the phone, I realized, I can't, I can't do this. Because I had somebody who was keeping me accountable, and because I was brought to Jesus, because I was brought to prayer, I realized, hey, if I start off my coming back from vacation like this, I'm going to slowly allow my light to be suffocated. So I just went to bed right then and there. I went to bed at 7.30 on Friday night, and I got up super, super early Saturday morning, and I got done all the things that I needed to do, and on Saturday, I spent two hours in the chapel. 
The first hour, I was really, really attentive, and it was a really good hour of prayer. And the second hour, I was really distracted and actually didn't pray very much at all. But I was back on the right track to keep going, to ask Jesus, Jesus, I want my light to blaze for the whole world to see. Jesus, I want to be holy. Jesus, I will not let anything, even the good things of life, suffocate your grace in me. Beware that you do not become drowsy, not in carousing and drunkenness, and not even in the anxieties of daily life. So in the midst of all the beautiful busyness that comes with Advent, in the midst of the parties and the shopping and the preparing our homes and all of these wonderful things, how will we allow Jesus to keep the light burning and, in fact, to make it burn even more brightly within us? Maybe you did pick up a copy of Rejoice to help you walk through Advent with Mary. Maybe you're going to come on Tuesdays for Rejoice or on Thursdays for Mercy Night. Please, please, please come to confession at least once before Christmas. Maybe you got Bishop Barron's Advent meditations or somebody else's Advent resource. Maybe you're going to go, I don't know, twice in this month and work at the food bank or do some kind of service. Maybe you're going to pray a little more. Maybe it's the rosary. Maybe you're going to read a little more. Maybe it's the Bible. I don't know what the best thing is for you to prepare for Christmas. But I do want to offer one thing for all of us. One thing that I honestly just think we all need. And that's just a little bit of silence. Just a little bit of silence that we might tune our ears to listen to the voice of God. You don't have to do anything in the silence. Just 10 minutes of silence every day. Maybe it's on your porch or in your favorite chair. Maybe it's here in church or in the Adoration Chapel. Or or maybe it's as simple as turning the radio off on your way to work. Every day. Ten minutes. That our hearts might not become drowsy with the anxieties of daily life. But that maybe this Advent, maybe... This Christmas, we can blaze with the love of God and have the best Christmas that we've ever had.